And when it comes to the subject of origins, there are basically two views, the evolution theory and the creation theory. No branch of creationism has ever met even one of the criteria required of a theory. They can't because science demands both accuracy and accountability. So there has to be a way to detect and correct any errors in a given explanation and determine for certain whether it's wrong in whole or in part or whether any of it is true to any degree at all. Ah, so it's a test you're looking for. We don't do tests. A theory has to be tested indefinitely. It demands understanding instead of belief, so it must be based on verifiable evidence. It must explain related observations with a measurable degree of accuracy. It must withstand continuous critical analysis and peer review, and it must be falsifiable, too. If it doesn't fulfill all these conditions at once, then it isn't science. If it meets none of them, it may be religion. We must require that evolution agree with all the facts if it is to be promoted from theory to truth. Evolution as an explanation for the origin of man cannot pass this test. Nothing would ever be promoted to truth, because truth implies there's nothing more to learn. That's why science, being objective, demands that everything be considered theory, no matter how proven it seems to be. Evolution has survived every test the greatest minds of the modern age have ever been able to pit against it. It's been demonstrated myriad ways with lab and field experiments and is further enhanced by compounded revelations in paleontology and systematics as well as the developments in embryology and advances in genomic research and bioengineering. Evolution is now one of the strongest theories in science. There is no fact it doesn't agree with and it's never failed any tests. But sadly, those controlling education in the southern United States don't want students to know that. So what can you expect? I don't believe personally that uh, the evolution itself is anything more than a theory. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Well, you see, evolution is a theory, not a scientific fact as it's generally considered to be. It is a fact that evolution happens, that biodiversity and complexity does increase, that both occur naturally only by evolutionary means. It is a fact that alleles vary with increasing distinction in reproductive populations and that these are accelerated in genetically isolated groups. It is a fact that natural selection, sexual selection, and genetic drift have all been proven to have predictable effect in guiding this variance. It is a fact that significant beneficial mutations do occur and are inherited by descendant groups and that multiple independent sets of biological markers exist to trace these lineages backwards through many generations. It is a fact that birds are a subset of dinosaurs the same way humans are a subset of apes, primates, eutherian mammals, and vertebrate deuterostome animals. It is a fact that the collective genome of all animals has been traced back to its most basal form, and that these forms are also indicated by comparative morphology, physiology, and embryological development. It is a fact that everything on Earth has definite relatives either living nearby or evident in the fossil record. It is a fact that the fossil record holds hundreds of definitely transitional species even according to its strictest definition, and that both microevolution and macroevolution have been directly observed. Evolution is a fact.